I'm going to start. Of course, I press the red button on time. Um, all right, this is a small group. I'm going, it's really well-structured presentation. It's broken up into four parts. I'm going to let questions happen while I'm going through it, because I think it's important as you're seeing things, if you want to ask, ask. As long as it's on the topic I'm talking about <laughs> at the moment, that's a good caveat when you're asking questions. Um, so we're going to talk about this keeping out blueprints module. I just uh, wrote a blog post, and I've done a lot of these presentations where I have long lists of goals and all the things I'm trying to do, and I boiled it down to love thy CMS. And what it really means is I just want people, when they come to the CMS, to have a great authoring experience, and when developers are consuming the APIs, they're like, oh yeah, it makes perfect sense to me. And even as they're building the site, it's just easier to build. It makes them appreciate the tools they have, and hopefully you're going to see that. But the, the, the deck is about going from 0 to 60 with the schema.org blueprints module. And my short intro is, you know, my name is Jacob Rockwitz. I want to make your life easier by solving complex problems with simple, well thought out solutions. I hope that's what you think about this. And you can find me all over at Rockowitz on the web. And yet, yeah, we're going to just go from 0 to 60 and we're starting out with nothing. We're just going to start our engines and getting started with schema.org. Um, and I've had a whole bunch of slides going through it, but I've boiled it down to these two key things. You can build anything in Drupal. And the benefit of schema.org is that defines what anything is. And the two hand in hand gives you a great content architecture. And then the approach, I'm kind of calling it, a, you know, taking a schema.org first approach means that we are no longer complying with this standard, we're leveraging it. So instead of building a site and then aligning with schema.org, you're using schema.org from the start. And that becomes your foundation. And I'm including this because I've done so much work, there's so many things going on, it's hard to track everything. And I decided to take kind of a cue from um, Architecture Decision Records, ADRs, and Lullabot kind of brought them. They've been around, but they've been discussing in the community. And tracking all the decisions and thought process behind the module, the code, down to if I'm going to act, like if there's a coding style question I have in the code base, I'll make a note about the coding style. If there's a module I'm going to install, I'm going to record a little note about it. And when I get there, you'll start to see what I'm talking about. And there's a blog post about it, but I kind of want to talk about recipes, help, and decisions. And recipes meaning really recipes, like cooking recipes. Because I've kind of figured out that this is the best way to give a quick, like, zoom in on schema.org and why it's good. And I know, I'm assuming everyone in this room knows a little bit about it, but I still think it's important to go sequentially. So this is schema.org, it's a spec, it's a collaboration between Microsoft, Google, and Yahoo. And I'm going to not browse the whole site, but I'm just going to go to the recipe schema. And I want to emphasize the whole thing about the word thing. Everything on schema starts as a thing, and then they have inheritance, and a recipe is a creative work that then is a how-to, and then you get down to a recipe. And this breaks down the properties, it's nicely structured where it breaks down, these are specific properties for a recipe. Um, it gives you a naming convention, it gives you expected data types, and it gives you descriptions. Um, and then, we, you don't need all these properties, it's just this is a recommendation to describe a recipe. At the bottom, we'll get a nice little code snippet, and I, most people are leaning toward just ONLD, and this is a description of a recipe. This is metadata underneath the page that search engines index and understand the information about your recipe. It breaks it down into all these little chunks of information. And the best example, and I love this because I do apple pie, I've been doing this for the past week. And one thing that threw me off is apple pie now is ranking really, like the cards used to be below the fold and now they're coming above the fold. And even if I go incognito, Google's tracking me to figure out that I must be really into Sally's baking addiction, apple pie recipe. These cards are driven off a subset of schema.org called Google Structured Data, which creates rich search results. That's what this is. Um, very easy to search for and find exactly what schema.org properties you'd want to target. Um, a little note about structured data, and I noted in a lot of places, is um, it's a subset, but Google is happy to read all your data, and they do. If you include schema on your site that Google's not using, they know about it. They analyze it. And if, more, uh, if Google sees a bunch of organizations using a certain type, they will start thinking about using it or enhancing rich results or indexing data that way. So with Apple Pie, see, very simple site. Never heard of this site before. Rank number one when I search for Apple Pie, which kind of blows me away. 
And the best hint I have, and I'm not an SEO expert, is this is a, a validator, so it's parsing that scheme underneath. This error is very minor. But when we get to recipe, and I know my schema really, this is the most verbose, detailed definition of a recipe I have seen in a long time. It is breaking down every little property. And when you go to the instructions, they're even giving you step-by-step -step instructions um, with a name, text, and a bookmark link to everything. So it is there. Okay. So in a lot of ways, this is setting the gold standard of what we're after. We're after describing everything about our site in Drupal. So we can kind of switch over to Drupal. And I'm not going to go to recipe immediately because I want to. I think it's important. There's a lot going on. Here's where people need to get oriented. So um, it's a plain. I have a demo site. This is uh, I'll, um, Olivero, but I am using the Jane Admin theme. Going to log in. There's a lot of submodules. The first one, there's a few I recommend immediately going to. Well, first off, go to help. And if you install the schema.org help module, there's actually, there's so many, it's, a, it's an ecosystem of a bunch of submodules adding little features and integrations into different parts of Drupal. The example is there's a dedicated, let's use, meta tag module where it just maps schema.org properties to meta tags so that you don't have to think about it. But really, for now, I just want to point out, going to the decisions, you can go to the schema.org blueprints help page. This is the, by the way, this is the readme file, the readme MD file just parsed and put into the admin UI. Um, I'll come to decisions in a second, but it just breaks down how to install it, some examples of Composer, because I'm using Composer Merge to organize, orchestrate all the dependencies and patches. I think that's an important one that people need to be aware of. And I'm actually just listing, it's a slightly different view of all the modules to give you some extra metadata, like which ones are installed, which ones have install hooks. You don't need all these modules on production. You only need the sub-modules that either enhance the authoring experience or provide just own LD. There's lots that are usage of generate content types, where you only, you, as you're building out your, your, your schema, that module needs to be enabled. Um, Decisions. So yes, I'm throwing. A lot, I'm going to be throwing so much at you. I mean, I want to summarize this document as my 20 years of building websites summarized into a, about 20 minutes of reading. It's recording everything I'm thinking about while doing the module, and I'm being really good about updating it. So when I add, and, and I'm not going to go through every detail, but just some examples is. What, how to map different Drupal entity types to schema.org. Like a node could be anything, but a user is a person. Or paragraphs, generally if you're doing paragraphs, you're looking for structured values or intangible values, small pieces of data that are comprised in larger schemas. Um, but really helpful, listen, if you want a 101 of my best favorite modules, at the bottom I am recording all the modules that are being installed to handle different use cases. Some are very matter of fact, like you use the address module for addresses and schema. Um, if you're curious what I'm doing with the Gin Admin theme, I'm noting all the little modules to do little enhancements as you, we're going through. You're going to see little nice things in Gin. And I know that's not related to schema, but go back to Love Thy CMS. It's about the best experience. So, and this is segmented all into a demo module that obviously you might, wouldn't use on production. You probably copy some of these ideas over. Um, the star next to any module just means that there's a little integration, a little, there's some code helping it. Like with paragraphs, there's star because there's a dedicated paragraphs module which says to the schema.org blueprints module, we're going to use paragraphs and here's how we'd like to use them. And that definition is configurable. Okay, we're going to go back and get back to recipes. So. Also, it's kind of just a good example. There's a report module where we get this, what I showed you on the schema.org website is now in Drupal. We have the spec available to us. So if we go over to recipes, we get basically what you used to on schema.org, schema and you should use both as a reference. The only enhancements are some metadata at the bottom, and I'm also recording articles related to different types. And if people are using this module, suggesting articles, I'm always open to it. This is actually configurable, so you can tweak it. And for example, this one link, and I wasn't going to show it, but it's worth pointing out. This is how to get that recipe into Google, and this is how to test it. Um, all right, so we're in the report system. Up here, there's add this schema.org type to your site. So if I click here, it will go to the content type creations system in Drupal. I kind of want to show you another way to get there. 
because I think this is more common, is you go to your content types and you'll get an add schema.org type button added to your site. This is, you have to enable the UI to get these features and the UI you can disable in production. Um, so we're here, we kind of get a starting page. Now I'm going to spend a good amount of time because this is the catch-all of everything that's happening in this module. It's a building a content type for us from schema. So we pass it and said we want a recipe. So it's giving us the recipe. These links are clickable to look at the report in Drupal to kind of navigate and understand the information. This is the content type creation form right here. The name, the machine name, which is automatically converted from schema if it's very verbose, like schema uses a different, they use a camel case, Drupal uses snake case. It'll do that conversion. The description is blank because there's a dedicated descriptions module. And what that does is it says, don't insert any of the descriptions anywhere. Leave them blank and then pull them from schema.org. So that if schema.org updates a description or you want to tweak it, it'll automatically just get propagated throughout your site and translated. Um, I'm going to skip these, but I just want to, a little note. You can add extra to SonLD. This helps in certain cases where you need to add a little extra metadata. Um, a good example is on the article content type, it will add the publisher information because it's universal. You're not going to change that per article. You're going to want that on every article. This is now basically managing your fields. And what it's doing is, and it's all based off a lot of configuration. Like for recipes, these are the properties we recommend by default. You can change those recommendations or how they're going to work. So it's listing up in yellow. It means that this schema.org property is going to create, add a new field in Drupal. If I scroll down, you'll see some green stuff. That, you know, in Drupal, every node has a date modified, it's green. So all we're saying is take data mod the date modified field in Drupal and map it to the changed property in schema.org. Um, and this is automatically done out of configuration. So about, we can have entity rec more information about this recipe. Maybe it's another article about the recipe or a restaurant that's doing it. And this just sets up the entity references and you see the machine name. Rarely do you have to change these. Um, if we want to add a new property or an additional one, like let's say we wanted an alternate name for a recipe. First you can click show on map to see everything. So, and by the way, the reason the map and show on map that's one by default is there's a massive amount of potential properties. And this can be overwhelming, which is kind of why I have all the references. Uh, but you'll see there is an alternate name right here. If I was going to say I don't want to look through everything, you can also do filtering. And now we got the alternate name. And if I say I want to add the field, it's actually going to do some figuring out. Say, well, you want a text field. In the configuration, it decide you can say I want this to be an unlimited value and change the naming convention to be pluralized. So alternate names. And I'm going to hit save. Um, and this is generating entire content type for you. Okay, from there, I'm going to go straight in and say, let's say we go to add content type. This is just a good example of Love Thy CMS. So this is the type tray. Uh, developer at Lullaby did it. It's an awesome way to make the add content form look and work better. Um, it just creates category, and you'll see as you add a lot of content types, it gets easier, and you can favorite them and filter them. We're just going to go look at recipe. Uh, I'm going to use Clapsol just to clean this up for two seconds. We get all our schema.org properties generating a pristine form for us. I'm using field groups to group them. There's actually, you can customize that. You get descriptions on all the elements pulled from schema. Um, recipe yield. What's the value? Cooking time, duration, duration field. That's a duration field. That's actually a dedicated module. That's why I'm recording all these modules because ideally you wouldn't want a text string. You want to kind of let people. Set the time. You can add instructions. Nutrition information is a really nice module called the custom field module. It just takes a bunch of, it's, it's like field, uh, field collection in Drupal 7. A bunch of fields grouped together. A little easier to manage, a little easier to reuse. Um, at the bottom, we're getting taxonomy set up. They're no, they have no data right now. I'll show that in a second. Can I ask a quick question? Yeah. Is there any actual dependency on the gen theme? No, okay. no. And, and really, when you see things that kind of skid off the rails from what you normally expect, it's the demo. There's a schema.org demo, and you can, if you didn't have that, a lot of this just goes back to the default thing. Okay. Um, and to really emphasize that, like the question of what, what do I need, what do I not need, 
look at the composer.libraries.json file. So in the core module, yes, there's like 20, there's 25 modules in there. They're not all required, but it sure as hell tells you what you, right. like if you don't, aren't doing recipes, you don't need the duration field. And it is optional, but it, as soon as you turn it on, it starts working better. Mm -hmm. um, and there's lots of hooks to make those decisions. I have a quick question for you. Sure, I don't mind. It's a small group. I mean, this is fantastic. Uh, it's going to get better. You realize we're like in the baby steps here. Like creating, creating the content type. Is there anything like? Is there any drawback to this? Is there any reason not to use it? Like, is it? Does it limit like the regular Drupal functionality? No, 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 no. I, I do. Okay, so let's stop right there and emphasize something. This generates this content type for you. Saves you all this time. This is normal configuration. You do whatever you want with it, and you can run wild with it. It is pushing a concept, like there's a nuance here that, and you can change this, but I made a decision, I, I questioned it for a year or so, and now I'm, I, I'm not going to back off of it. These fields get created with a schema underscore prefix instead of a field underscore prefix. And really to kind of start saying in Drupal, here's structured data, here's real data that's important. This is the data I want to push out to APIs. And that, by the way, that's the only nuance where you're like, yeah, you're taking on something. Because you could do this and turn off everything related to schema and then go off on your own. Like if you didn't need just own LD, you could probably turn off the entire module. Um, I will say, you're seeing, I am doing a lot of nice UI enhancements all over the place. So it's kind of worth keeping. But, and I, I'm going to emphasize a few. Just uh, on the sidebar, um, so the meta tag module does a couple of cool things and I think I'm going to focus on that one as just a cool example of an integration. Um, one, it adds meta tags to every content type. So you don't have to sit there, keep clicking when you add a content type. It just does it automatically. Um, in the demo gen admin theme, I am just doing this nice little thing of cleaning up this form to be only the properties I want to say. It's like, by the way, that's a good example code. It's an exam example code of how to get in here and be like, I only need these to be visible. And like going into robots and saying, only no index. Because if normal meta tags is like a fire hose of information. Um, Similarly, at the bottom, let's see if I can show you, like XML sitemap automatically gets edited. I mean, some of these modules are kind of stupid and simple. You create a content type, it adds it to the XML sitemap. I actually worked on one where, and I just did this the other day. There's a wonderful module called the content model documentation. As you create content types, it adds this read documentation and builds out a documentation help page for all your content types. Totally optional, but my team, we've been burned by this enough where I'm just like, we got to start from scratch. And when someone has a problem, I'm like, you go here, you edit it, you put in your notes, you put in your screenshots. Um, so yeah, there's a ton of enhancements. We are done with, oh wait, I'm missing kind of the key. You know what, since it's a small group, generally I use Devel Generate to show the JSON LD, but you can believe, do you believe me that there's great JSON LD being generated from this? And I will show it to you, I promise. I'm going to stick to that promise, but it helps where I don't have to click Devel Generate and I can go, we are, and we're still just starting out, because really, I just created one content type, but we all are building solutions, and it's about building a standardized content architecture, architecting our solution for our organization. And there are two approaches that have evolved and one simpler than the other. Mapping sets provide a quick and easy way to set up and test different related schema.org types. So we only did one type, a recipe. It's a great example because it's very independent. But conversely, if we were going to do an event, events are not actually that simple because, yes, it's a date and a description, but then you have people that might speak at the event or attend the event. You have an organizer who might be an organization and usually have a location or a place that it, it needs to happen at. And what mapping said too, it says, well, just here's the sequence of content types I want to create to you know, frame out a site. And all it's focused on is schema.org types. And that's enough to kind of get started and test a lot of concepts. But if you're really building a full solution, and by the way, this is like starter kits, the recipe initiative, it's a set of schema.org types or content types with additional configuration, it sets up and configures an entire working solution which addresses a specific feature set or business requirement. Sounds very close to the recipes initiative in Drupal. It is. And will it'll gradually align. But what's a key thing in this is the additional configuration. So 
we create recipe, we created a recipe content type, but we need a recipes admin. We need a recipes view. We need to show people those recipes. So we need a view that's imported while we're creating that recipe content type. And that's the exact use case for Story Kids. And I'm going to just demo these. Okay. So, and was, I like stepping back before we go deep into this to be like, the schema.org module is in configuration under schema.org. We're going to start from the root. By the way, references back to the documentation. Mappings tracks those mappings. When we created that recipe, we're going to see it. Let's see. Right here. It's just recording that we created a recipe. It has an endpoint. Um, you're seeing, like the media, if you install the schema.org media module, it will map core's default media types to schema.org's um, in audio object, data download, image object, video object, you know, the both video, remote and local videos are both video objects from sch um, schema's perspective, just different properties. Um, and then moving on, mapping types is a definition of how we're going to take a Drupal entity type and use schema.org with it. I'm not going to spend too much, but kind of the point is like this first column is basically saying, well, Drupal's default article and page should map to schema.org's article and web page. Um, and the same thing, that media stuff I just showed you, same behavior. Generally, you don't ever need to touch this. This just gets installed, but you have, there is a lot of configuration you can go and adjust and, and tweak it. Where I'm going is mapping sets. So this is a page, this is a set different sets of information. The first one's required, and it's kind of just to nudge us in the direction, like we're going to want to have media map, and if we have any taxonomy, and people, we're going to want to create a person content type. But almost everyone needs to use these content types. Um, before I even start clicking buttons, you know, this is a very long form. It looks really complex, but underneath the hood is really simple YAML data, just grouping the information. And I want to just emphasize, this is the key pattern people need to see, is the colons delineating what's the entity type I want and what's the schema that work type. And it's going to say we're going to create a node content type that's an organization. Go back to manage. I'm going to hit set of types. I'm going to hit create. Go confirm. And what underneath here is basically just a table showing you everything that's happening. So this is scout. Yeah, you can totally ask questions because this just keeps spinning. Yes. Uh, so the period that you could add your own. A hundred percent. Yeah. Well, that's where. Or edit. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I would for. If someone is a developer and they're starting out with this, I would go toward the starter kits. This is a very quick way to like, you're an agency and you want to be like, I need to understand all the different sectors I might work with. You can play with that here and even contribute back to these defaults. Like this will spin up a podcast and set up all the relationships properly for a podcast, but then doesn't have a podcast list page. Starter kits give you a little more flexibility and you'll see it puts it all into a YAML file that you have control over. Um, but there is, this is really tooling for prototyping. Yeah, I almost think that's the right way to put it. This is a great tool for prototyping, very quickly seeing how things work. Because if you have develop generate, you get fill this out with some default content. And you can even tear it down, tweak your configuration, then we run it. So if you're missing a property, you want to see how that's going to work, you can adjust it. I'm going to do generate content. And I just got to emphasize, this scaffold the entire site. Like this stuff takes days to do. And it's just spinning it up. And now it's just feel like this will be relatively quick. Um, and the example would be, let's go over here. We've got, let's look at person. We just get a nice, simple person. First name, I, I like using the Beatles names. Uh, there's a, it's important to kind of try to help people get around. There's a schema.org experimental project where inside there is a develop module. And that develop module does little tweaks to the develop generate. For example, with names, I really felt it was stupid to have Latin characters. You needed some, it just makes it a little easier. And so you can set some default test values when you're doing develop generate. Um, it's starting to fill out. It's giving us some content, some relationships. And I want to emphasize now we're going to start to see the JSON LD. And I'm going to come back to it. But full description of this person with the image associated, the date metadata about it. Um, a better example, and I'm going to switch gears. I, I can emphasize like what you bring up. Down here, I think I have recipes, right? Like, uh, let me see if I did a restaurant. 
food establishment. You could say you're a food establishment and you have recipes, and you could kind of play with those content types. And that actually generates a rich menu that you can fill in all the menu items. And I don't work in the restaurant industry, so it's not, this is about the limit I'm willing to go on this. And that's funny, because when I go to Startup Kids, you'll see I work in healthcare, and I'm going down rabbit holes that are kind of ridiculous. Um, for recipes, what I want to kind of show is, so I have a starter kit for recipes, and I also, the recipe, uh, these starter kits support some dependencies, so I created an umami content, and when I install this starter kit, you're going to see that this, it figures out that we have recipes created, there's nothing new, we're using the default recipe, everything's green, and when I click confirm, all it's doing is turning on the modules, which can contain, and I debate this one where, the recipes initiative in Drupal is not going to support code. It's going to support configuration. It's kind of nice to have a little code sometimes in a starter kit. Um, and one of the code things that's happening here is there's an install hook. It's a module. The starter kit installs and says, oh, give me the umami content. Bring it into my schema. And just maps it. And the example would be if I click, well, the better example, because here's the thing. Every, so far, I kept going to the content admin page to show you the content that we're generating and importing. The goal of a starter kit is to kind of come up here. Oh, I made my fonts bigger, so it just got compressed. Is over here, it adds a shortcut to a recipes landing page. And there's all our recipes from the Umami theme. You can click through. Nice, clean data. And as I promised, you get your perfect JSON LD describing the recipe for Google so that it will index it. Um, to make to go on to more advanced starter kits, the one I like to show, I don't know if people work in healthcare, but the ones I'm working on, and we're not using yet, is a way to map out all the medical, I work for a cancer hospital, and to do a schema for all the medical information down to what the symptoms are, and it's broken up. No one's doing that. I want to emphasize that on the web. They do schemas where they're like, yes, we have a disease page, and that's about the level maybe four or five properties. We're talking everything gets built out and mapped to schema and structure. Um, it's a little easier for a demo to talk about a hospital because we all know how hospitals work. Um, I'm going to hit confirm because it's going to take a second. And once again, I want to emphasize the green and yellow. We already created person, but what is happening in these starter kits, it will merge your requirements. So. For a hospital, we want our people to have contact points, multiple ways to reach them, maybe to make an appointment, maybe to reach their, to fax them. And so the contact point property is getting enabled and the contact point paragraph was created. Probably not going to go any further than that with this. Um, I do want to emphasize, you see medical organization and business. This is something I'm interpreting from schema. Um, everything's an organization. I want to emphasize a medical business is an organization. but when. You look at schema, you have organization, and then you have local business, and then medical business is underneath that. Generally, the way I interpret schema is an organization has members. It's people that do something. A business is people that work together. So you can kind of pick and choose the properties, and they give you enough flexibility, but you need to make decisions. So organizations have members, businesses have employees. And then you have people who work for a business or are a member of an organization. And Schema does a great job of establishing those relationships for us. You don't have to reinvent the wheel on how you're structuring your data. And the example would be coming up here, and I want to emphasize the starter kit, I tend to skip over this, but it added admin views to list out the locations, the doctors, the medical organizations, all this stuff. Um, I can actually use one of those. Go over to organization. We got all organizations and we click on it. And there's a dedicated, so I want to really emphasize, because it's clear, but if I show it to you, you can almost get over one, is we're building out an org chart. That's what just happened. We have an organization, they have properties for parent and sub organization. And with that said, you need, and that's what these properties are. These are entity references to other parts of the site. It's building an entire tree. Um, all these features are little, the, these, these relationships are being built using the corresponding entity reference module. So it does back and forth references, which makes it really powerful when you want to build views. Um, there's a dedicated, it, this is a little widget that I'm experimenting with, but it's 
pretty good is it's a pre-populated widget. So when you go and select any of these, it'll say, add a person to this organization. It'll pass in the, I can even just illustrate the core. It passes in a query string parameter. All this is just set up dynamically. It's like a little YAML file that says, allow someone to pass in member of, and then scroll down here, and add them as a member of the organization. So it starts building a full org chart for you. Um, the more prettier feature that you can sell people is there's a diagram module. This is Mermaid JS. I absolutely love this thing. It's writing out diagrams with just YAML, and they do a fairly good job of rendering reasonable diagrams. This organization is the subject of these four articles. This organization tree, and by the way, the cross the crisscrossing lines is because we use develop generate. Generally, this org chart would be pretty linear, but it shows that this organization has parents and children or sub organizations. Um, and all the, yeah, I think that's enough here. Let's see. I have a quick question. Now we're totally keep going. I've been helping too. So yeah. This is, this is really interesting um, to me. So, what about uh, multiple affiliations? What about, like, uh, does it handle that? That's fine. Because yes. we would do that with, like, like a tagging or is there something? Oh, there's a ton of, yeah, there's an affiliation property. You, I mean, I use entity references or you can use taxonomy terms and you can control that. If you use more than one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I will say that I kind of made this decision that generally you have a field and you map it to a schema.org property. You don't have multiple fields mapping to the same property. Um, keeping in mind that that custom just own LD allows a lot of flexibility because then you can inject your own thing. But yeah, there's an affiliation property. Um, I haven't reached the point with a healthcare organization, I just want to throw it out there, like, as, as administration level, do you use, like, groups? If you have a really complex healthcare, each department could be their own group. I'm sure it could be supported, but I haven't sorted that out. You could have people in multiple oh. groups or, or, yes. in, or, in, or, like, um, specialties in multiple departments. I'm going to, okay, let's talk about that, because this is important. This is, like, a new moment in terms of the schema being incredible. Uh, I'm going to go back here, and let's see if we can get, okay, we got to get a person. That's the key thing for this demo. Because you're asking about, like, how do you deal with people? Like, how, how do you, uh, you affiliating, how do you know what they're doing? Even specialties, so like, we mm -hmm. have, so we're a healthcare system, so we have, like, the organization would probably be the healthcare system, then the local business would be the hospital, mm -hmm. but then underneath we have specialties that belong to multiple hospitals, but not all of them. Or we have, so, or we have yeah. uh, people that are at multiple hospitals mm -hmm. and multiple specialties. Yeah, yeah, you know, I totally get it. A um, couple things about specialties, there's no, if you needed a, a bunch of people, like there's no, um, there is no schema.org type for department. Um, if you look it up, it'll be a department store, a room in a, a, like, a, a like it's not mm -hmm. a department or organization, but schema has something called additional types. And what that means is you could say, this is a local, a department to me is a medical organization, and the subtype is department. And when you and it's all supported in the module, you can say this is a medical department. I, I actually think it's important to prefix it with medical department because of their nuance. Um, and you can move it, it gets automatically moved to an additional type property. And that allows you to kind of have content types that don't align with schema perfectly. You're kind of making a suggestion, and search engines do respect that. Especially if that rep, the suggestion you're making aligns with wiki data. Like, they even say you could point to a URL on Wikidata. Like, if you're a bridal shop, they don't have a spec for bridal shop. But if you add an additional type that says this is a bridal shop at Wikidata, 100% understood by search engines. That, that's, I mean, that's AI. Um, but going back to organizing people, a great example is um, there's no doctor, there's a physician schema.org type. That is considered a business, not a person. And a person is the founder of that business, so a doctor would be a person on your site, and you say, this doctor is the founder of this physician practice. And schema went, that still could be a little vague. So schema went a step further and created something called roles. So, oh, and it's not populating, so I can actually illustrate it here. Okay, so we have Paul here, Paul Stark. Unless he works for member of. Give me one second. Ah, by the way, wasn't expecting to demo it, so I have to get to it a different way. Let's use this. Down here, sub-organization relationships. 
the art of a live demo, which is actually, oh, I'm willing to stru struggle for two seconds here. We're going to go to a medical organization, test, down at the bottom, here we go, Paul. We found Paul, and we're going to say he's the president. And what this is doing, and hopefully I can just hit save. And there's our little chart. What a role does is clarifies a relationship. So if you have enough, like you're trying to build a department, you need to know who's the head of the department, who's the chairman. This total the schema is a spec of roles. I mean, even on someone who's a um, a team member, a football team member, maybe they're the quarterback, maybe on a different team they're a different member, and you put this role right in the middle of that relationship, and it clarifies exactly how things are structured. Um, it's I love this feature, and there's a dedicated module to kind of managing and building it out. How are we on time? Oh, okay. I'm fine, on, fine enough on time. We might not have questions at the end, which is kind of perfectly cool. Um, I kind of want to step back and just talk about content authoring, because I think it's one of the most important things that Drupal is working on improving. And I really feel it's important. We're focusing on data, which is great for developers, but you want people to enjoy building pages. And, you know, accomplishing what they want. And everything's been the demo, which I said before. It's just an example of the best-in-class CMS built with, or on top of this module. But I really want to focus on page building and the two paradigms. Site builders can create a page using a simple HTML editor, maybe not so simple, but with embedded content, or create complex layouts using paragraphs, or the layout paragraphs module, which is what we've done, with multiple components. Um, so I have CK Editor and Mercury Editor. Mercury Editor is just a layer built on top of layout paragraphs, which is built on top of paragraphs. And layout paragraphs is just a way to have paragraphs in multiple columns. I mean, we'll start to see that kick in. And the demo for CK Editor that I kind of will stay here, I just want to emphasize I'm just exploring a lot with CK Editor. And, you know, some people are complaining, CK Editor, the migration was painful, but the features available are pretty vast. So, when I say embedded content, we can go in and say, I'd like to, by the way, this is embedding media, people are used to this, this is in core, but I might want to embed another, a recipe inside here. I'm going to put in a teaser mode, and I've dropped a recipe. And the image, of, I don't know why that happened, but anyway. The other one, this is a really cool, one of my favorite modules right now, it's called the embedded content module. And what this is doing, and wasn't intended, but now it's kind of like that. It's like creating blocks, simple things that you just want to drop into HTML. It's not an entity because it's a one-off thing, but it's solely aligning with the single directory component. So in the example I have, I have a single directory com component called a quotation. It maps to schema.org, and I can say, love thy CMS. I can say it's spoken by me. I'm not going to align it, and it'll drop a quote in. And this is structured HTML. You can't edit this. You can't put styles on it. But you can double click and tweak it. This is a very lightweight to build very rich content. And a quote is usually one off. You don't need a content type for a quote. It doesn't totally make sense. That is super cool. But I mean, that's going to display as a black quote. <laughs> Yeah. Well, but you know, it's a single directory component. You can do whatever you want with it. That's kind of the, 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 the point there. Um, and then I'm going to also show you other... I'm going to give Martin some credit who's sitting right there and embarrass him. Um, this is so cool. This is the accordions detail CK editor block where you can just say, you know, learn more. It's a simple slide out. And if I go to source... By the way, I was wondering, this is an experiment with... So CK Editor, I think they made the right decision putting the toolbar on one line or kind of recommending that approach in the dot, dot, dot. But this becomes a nightmare for certain people. You got to be really careful. So I'm experimenting with full screening, <laughs> like breaking the entire paradigm of CK Editor and being like, don't put the full screen on the far right, put it on the left. So that when someone really needs to write some content, they can get to it quickly. And I'm doing that right now. And it, even still, because I have my fonts bumped up, um, I just want to show you the source for people who are not familiar with this pattern. It's putting little XML tags, like a Drupal entity tag. And for the embedded content one that you see, it's just serializing all that data into the quote is serialized into its own data. So it's super flexible. There's some limitation here on that. It's not perfect. But I want to, 
what I want to emphasize is that I want to point out. This is still structured data because you can parse it. It's not hard. You go and say, give me the entity, the embedded content. I know it's a quote, and I know I have these values. So, and by the way, this starts to rely on schema.org, just in the naming convention. So if I hit save, and I yeah, look, we see what we got, right? At the bottom, what I want to emphasize, and now it's worth opening this in my little plugin. We've parsed all that embedded content into schema. We're telling search engines that this page has a quote. I can't say the quote is part of this main content because it's a little arbitrary, and we might tweak this. You might, I feel like we just don't know that you might never quote be stable. We'll adjust it as needed to get the most optimized results. But you see that we embedded a recipe, so it discovered the recipe and said, hey, there's a recipe on this page. And then if I close it, it says, well, we created a medical organization. Here's the generated content. And, oh, by the way, there's member role. I just want to illustrate that in just so no deep because it's a really, it's cool. It's, and by the way, that's just the string symbol. You can do a lot with roles and say someone's in that role from these dates. Um, I feel like that gets into a whole realm of overkill, but possible. Okay, so we have a limitation. We, we're, but basically, in these, we're just stacking things in embedded content. And we want to do layouts for marketing. So the other approach is Mercury Editor. And... I do want to just show you, yeah, see how this is getting filled out, grouped. All these categories are configurable. You can adjust it. Um, what I want to do is go to basic page, and it switches the page building experience to what we're kind of familiar for layout. And this is, um, Mercury Editor has just done all their research on all the paradigms and patterns, Gutenberg, Squarespace, uh, Wix, or what they're doing, and kind of, is the, it's the best of the best, in my opinion. Um, you get the form down, th this, you have your rich form over here. Thank frankly, for a page, you're generally not going to fill out a lot of this information, or you'll only fill it out once. I actually am working on sorting that out, because generally you'll fill it out and never come back to it. What the marketer is going to do is come here and say, I would like to add a call to action. Uh, love thy CMS. Say I want to add an image. I always think it's funny to find weird ones on here. We'll do uh, vegan chocolate brownies. We're going to insert that. Some text with typos. Um, HTTP calls on Drupal.org. It's a Drupal. In here is a bunch of, like I'm using um, a called style options, or no, this is link attributes, where I can just say, I want this link to be a primary button. I don't need a title attribute. This is schema.org being slipped in to say, when someone goes to this link, I want them to view something. It's an action API. Um, if I go to the top, I can also, using the style options, and by the way, this is more Mercury Editor specific, but I just want to make this stand out a little bit more. Hit save, we get a CTA. Let's say I want to add a quote. Love by CMS. By the way, I need to fix. It. Can't should say spoken by. It says Jake. It drops in a quote. I could keep adding stuff, but what I want to illustrate is I hit save. Then we hit done. Oh, and I want to emphasize this is they're really trying hard. Let's just say this is a, a about page about Drupal, and you can even this is the example of subtopping. You could say this is an about page on the site. When I hit save, by the way, you're going to get this. This is coming through this great example. Where you've got to kind of make decisions that probably don't want these values displayed. But for now, I'm going to display them. I did skip something. Just amazing niceties. Full mobile support preview, iframe. This thing is brilliant. Um, it's in alpha. I would use it. I would use it as long as you're committed to just read the release notes. Like they, and they are writing update hooks in alpha. I just did an update last night. Didn't break a thing. Um, really well thought out, great code. Um, oh, uh, lost the my. Let's see. I know I hit save, right? Yeah, I hit save. Yeah. So. About. Yep, and let's just make it clear that yes, if I go over here, same thing. This is a little different because actually, I will say the Mercury Editor is better structured data because. I know I have a page, and I have something in the page, in a layout, and therefore I can use the main entity property to kind of group all those pieces of information together. And I want to emphasize everything you see. 
every one of those components actually has some corresponding schema. So we're saying, and listen, CTAs are tricky. That's not something in schema, but we're saying this web content, well, it's a CTA. I actually, this is the example, I'm adding that additional property that goes to Wikidata and says, this is a call to action. So AI understands that this is a promotional piece of information. Um, and you see quote is coming through and then the view action is appended at the end. Okay, how are we on time? We are, we're at time. I can keep going and just show a little code. I think I, I, if you guys, well, yeah, we're at time. I'm gonna go three minutes more and show a snippet of code, take questions, and then I come back to it and people can absolutely leave. And if you have to leave now, it's not a problem. Um, so you just need to learn about the code, the default settings and the starter kits. And I think the starter kits, yeah, I'm gonna say, I've said a lot of this. There's a lot of sub-modules. Everything is good default configuration. Generally, I try what's out of the box and then go in and tweak it if you need to. Um, the key thing that the mapping says, you saw that YAML, like that, yeah, that YAML, if I go into the ID, and let's just talk about, close this, pull this up, modules, sandbox. So recipe, think about this. This is all boilerplate Drupal. Nothing special is happening here, not even in an info file. The install file just creates a shortcut, and there's this schema.org starter kit YAML file. This is the simplest definition. All it's saying is, I would like a recipe to be created when this is installed. And the only other thing happening in this module is that in config, I'm saying I would like to add this view. It's optional because it has to happen after the recipe is created. And the rewrite here, I just decided that I wasn't happy with the nutrition information in terms of the min-max scale, so I just wrote a little config rewrite. It's a config rewrite module where I'm just massaging the configuration being created. This just illustrates, I could have gone into the admin UI and done this after the recipe was created, but it's kind of nice to get it encapsulated in configuration. The hospital starter kit obviously is more complex, and so if we go to the YAML file, you're going to see that what I'm doing here is nudging certain properties to always be on. I want to be out, like, I'm basically saying, you know what, people need to have honorific suffix and prefix for my healthcare institution. Um, I also want to nudge all these relationships forward to make sure they're there. And I had mentioned how medical business, I want employees but not members. And this is doing that. It's nudging forward and saying, I, I want, for medical business, I want to know when someone works for them, but I don't really need to know the parent organization or the sub-organization. It's not necessary in this example. Of course you can go copy this into your own, site, your own instance of a starter kit and work with it. Same patterns on the config. I'm just rewriting, I'm adding views, and the one that I was rewriting was, I talked about subtyping. I just wanted to nudge medical organization subtypes to kind of align with what a healthcare institution would need. Um, the last thing, if you're doing this, and think about it, this is kind of, it's generating a massive amount of configuration on the fly, and that configuration can easily change. I could change something, Core could change something. And there's a test called the config snapshot test, and I'll just show you the one that's included in here is, it's inherited from a base class. I just want to emphasize, I'm not going to go too far, but the base class describes how to use it. And all it's saying is, I want to install this module, and I want you to keep a snapshot of all the configuration generated, and then the test compares the snapshot to what's actually happening with the module. So if something changes upstream, you actually, the test will fail immediately. And just to emphasize that this directory, is that mass amount of configuration being generated for your, your site. Um, okay, I'm gonna wrap up. I mean, people always like to ask how to contribute. It's getting these schema.org types right is the biggest contribution you can make, is looking at that default configuration, like maybe we should add this property, maybe we shouldn't add this. Um, one of the reasons there's so many submodules, it actually does make it easier to contribute. If you're having an issue with meta tag, you only need to grok this small little module that does one thing. It adds meta tags. It's like you don't need to navigate the whole code base. Um, ending with love thy CMS. And yeah, uh, thank you. I'll hang out for questions, or you guys can catch me. Yeah, I actually have a very... 
specific one. Uh, I've been peddling recipes. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I love about the T7 version is it has the um, scale function mm -hmm. and double it, have it. You know, I, I don't need any surface, I need mm. any four. In order to do that, mm -hmm. you have to keep the, the, um, the ingredients you need to be divvied out yeah. into, in, to a number, a unit. Oh, the calculate, yes. And a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, for the A, you can multiply B, you can multiply I actually know the answer. Training yeah. units, you know. Yeah. You know how would you? Do you switch to paradigms? You would, you would move that nutrition information out of this simple key value pair system and you build it in paragraphs so you have structured data. It's, the reason I use this custom field is it's key value pairs. And on an API level, it's that simple. When you go to paragraphs, it gets a little nested and you have to kind of go down a rabbit hole. But I see where you're going. And the menu system, like menu support kind of a good example of a lot of nested paragraphs. Oh, that would be an example you can think of it too. Where you might use the schema for part of it. Mm -hmm. You could use it for all of it, it's just a matter of what's the extra medicine.